In this video we look at how to control the internal effects macros and P3 mix on a Mac Aura PXL. In the patch we see a Mac Aura PXL in 32 channel basic mode. The effects are controlled by five channels. There is an FX1 selection and rate and there is an FX2 selection and rate. So you can run two effects in parallel. On top of that, there is an FX synchronization channel that allows you to synchronize the two effects engines or synchronize or offset effects between multiple fixtures. By default, we set them to synchronized. You will notice that the effects are grouped in six categories. Let's start with category one first. These are beam intensity effects. Let's start with the sparkle stars. With the effects rate channel, you can adjust the speed and direction of the effect. So let's speed it up a little bit. You'll see the effect is now running on the beam of the fixture. And I can slow it down as well. Let's have a look at a different effect, the beam built up, built down. So this effect is now running, of course, with the color set by the RGB channels but you can actually set a second color as well using the virtual color wheel. Let's take blue here. So now blue from the virtual color wheel is used as a background and the red from the color picker is used as a foreground, allowing you to create two color effects. Let's pick a different background color, dark green. You see that's now the background while red is still the main color of the effect. And using the color picker and RGB channels, I can now also change the foreground color of the effect. So this allows you to make two color effects very easily. Let's try this with a different effect with this spinning cross. You see still the same two colors. And of course, I can also take out the background color by removing the virtual color wheel and then the background is just black. Now let's have a look at the second category of effects the beam color effects. These override the colors of the beam completely. Let's start with a red, white, blue snap effect. You see, it overrides whatever color you selected on the color picker. Another nice example is this fire effect. Let's take the beam out and let's start looking at some aura effects. So let's bring in the aura. And the aura starts in category three, which are the aura intensity effects. Let's start with the star field. You see the effect running on the aura now. The FX rate channel does not only control the speed of the effect, but also the direction. So for example, on this star field effect, I can now make it spin counterclockwise. And also here, the color wheel of the aura allows you to set a background color once again enabling two color effects very easily. Let's have a look at this effect, this slice by chase, and let's speed it up a little bit. You see the same thing. The main color comes from the color picker, the background color comes from the virtual color wheel. Another very nice effect is this scrolling line. And let's take out the background color by removing the virtual color wheel. The aura intensity effects also contain the full set of characters and numbers that can be displayed on the aura LEDs. Let's start with this A and you see it's slowly pulsating. You can actually bring the effects rate channel to 128 to the middle and then it stops. So then you have a static character. And of course, you can select different characters like this C. Or this G. Another neat trick is that the FX ray channel can be used to flip the character upside down, which is a handy feature in case the fixture is orientated differently on your stage. The fourth bank of effects 
are the Aura color effects. Once again, overriding the colors of the Aura completely. Like for example, this swimming pool effect. The fifth category are effects that combine the beam and the Aura, like this welding effect. Of course, I need to bring up the intensity of the beam again to see the effect play on both the beam and the Aura. The last category of effects combine beam, Aura and zoom. Like for example, this Aura splash effect. You see that the intensity of the beam and the Aura and the zoom is modulated. Now let's disable all the effects and have a look at P3 Mix. So let's first dim down the beam so that we can look at the Aura first. So this is how the fixture is mapped on the P3. You see this video clip running in the background. And let's have a look. So the fixture has a P3 Mix channel which has three modes. It has the mix mode, it has a mixing mode, and it has a video mode. So in the mix mode, the color coming out is fully controlled by the DMX channels. If I now go to mix mode and slowly fade, then you see the fixture cross fade between the color set on the lighting desk and the video coming into the P3 controller. So this is great for cross fading between two looks. So you see the video appearing, and the color from the desk disappearing. Here you see how the mapping works on the Mac Aura Pixel, his Aura LEDs. So if we fade back to the DMX, you see indeed that the color from the desk is now taking over from the video again. The third mode on the P3 Mix channel is the video mode. In this mode, the DMX controls the color, but the video still controls the animation. So I can control the color of the video on a fixture by fixture basis. So with my color picker, I can make the video appear in any color I like. Let's take down the Aura and let's try the same on the beam. So let's bring it up again. And also here, there's a P3 Mix channel for the beam with the same three modes, DMX, Mix, and Video. In DMX, the color just comes from the desk. In Mix, I can slowly crossfade between the color from the desk and the video coming into the P3 controller. You see the pattern from the video now appearing on the beam LEDs. Here you see the P3 for reference. And let's crossfade back to the color coming from the lighting desk. Also here, there is the third mode, the video mode, allowing you to apply a color on top of your video.